What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode 20. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is not going to be long, you guys, because we are winding down. We're getting to the end of the season, and y'all know how it gets towards the end. All of the drama has is behind us. It seems like the only drama left might be some Candy and Todd type stuff. But for the most part, I think we have hit it. So we start this episode off, everybody's back from Greece, and so Nene is recapping with Greg about what went down and how it went. And of course, she's telling the story. She's giving a real light, light version of what went down. She's talking about something, she threw some popcorn at Kenya. No, you spit some popcorn at Kenya, let's be clear. Um, but again, you know, neither one of y'all are innocent in this situation. Y'all have both done dirt to each other. Now they do... Um, y'all know how Bravo like to be shady and they do give us some clips and they go back to all the times that Kenya talked about people's relationships and people's husbands and they talked about the Portia thing when she said that Cordell was just a beard. I mean, when she was a beard for Cordell and they talk about when she came for, um, Kim's kids. And so again, Kenya, for all y'all that like to support Kenya, she's not innocent. For all y'all that like to support Nene, Nene, Nene ain't innocent. At the end of the day, they have done dirt to each other. And, you know, sometimes it's okay to just not be friends with somebody. And like Nene said, Nene was like, I don't really care for her, but I don't hate her like that. You know, like, I don't hate her like that. But we, you know, they only associate for the purposes of a check. And that's okay. Because you know what? We all do the same thing at work all the time. There are people on our job that we, well, 90% of the people at our job, we don't communicate with outside of work. All of y'all that are sitting home right now quarantined, how many of your coworkers have you talked to? Count them up. Okay. So, then we have uh, Candy and Todd. Candy. I'm going to get back to Candy and Todd because you know what? They're going to be the bulk of this conversation. I'm going to go on and get back to them. But we see where she's basically planning to go to the shop. She's getting ready for her trip. The baby going to be here in seven weeks. She's going to be filming for 10. They're trying to figure out logistics. They're talking about she going, you know, they're going to rent, a, uh, rent a, 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 a tour bus and take the tour bus back to Chicago because she wants to be there with her baby. And here's the thing. I get it. Um... You know, babies have their own, you know, you you started the insemination process before you got this opportunity, this acting opportunity. But I, I you know, and again, I know you want to get more into acting and I don't have no problem with that. But my question, I guess, is you couldn't have waited till after the baby got here. And I and if if the, the part on the shot sort of spontaneously came to you and you accepted it, great. I can't judge that. But if you actively sought it out, knowing you had a baby on the way. I think the fact that you were not physically carrying that child maybe gave you some freedom that you would, or made some some decisions that you may not necessarily made differently. But we'll get back to Candy and Todd. I did say I wasn't going to talk with them, but I'm going to get to the, I'll wait for the meat and potatoes till we get to the meat and potatoes. Now, Kenya went to go visit her estate plan. It's the same woman we saw her with earlier this season, and she let the woman know she didn't have, um, uh, um, a prenup and basically Kenya was like I make more money than him and I have more access than him and I just want us to walk away I don't want it to be bitter I just want to walk away and I just want to make sure that Brooklyn don't get nothing I mean that he doesn't get anything that I've set aside for Miss Brooklyn um and she said that her aunt is going to be Brooklyn's caretaker so she put her affairs on order ain't nothing wrong with that I've asked this question before and I'm going to ask it again where is Kenya's other aunt Remember the other aunt that had the short blonde hair that used to be like her confidant before she went to um, Detroit and showed her ass and showed up at her mama doorstep with a big ass tour bus? Y'all remember that aunt? Where is she? We ain't seen her since because she came back and she laid Kenya ass out and we ain't seen her since. Interesting. So then we see Cynthia go down to, ta see, I was going to say tags. Tags is candy shop. We are pressed. Cynthia, this is the stuff that I'm talking about. And this is why people be be looking at you, talking about you flip-flopping and you, you know, you be backpedaling and pussy popping and all this other stuff. This is why. This is why. So, before we go there, did y'all see them fake Fendi sweaters she had hanging up in the press boutique? You know good and damn well that press is not no Fendi vendor. Y'all know good and damn well that you're not walking up in press buying no Fendi sweater. Y'all know y'all not. Nene, stop it. Just stop it. Just, just stop it. 
moving on. So we see, <clears throat> um, again, they're talking about Greece and Nene was saying, you know, I wasn't really feeling you that last night. You was going to make fun of me. You was, and she was like, I wasn't going to make fun of you. I was, you know, we wanted to make light of the situation, but it wasn't to make fun of you per se so much as it was, you know, for us to just kind of let you guys see how ridiculous y'all were being or whatever. And she was like, but I wasn't going to play you crazy. I wasn't going to play you crazy. You know, I was going to play you, um, I was going to play you like this. And she proceeds to basically throw all of Nene's taglines out. And, you know, I'm that bitch. I'm that blah, 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 blah. I'm the HBIC. I, I'm going to keep my peach. You know good and damn well that ain't how you was about to play that. Stop it. See, that's the stuff. That's, see, Nene, see, Cindy, that's why don't nobody take you seriously. That is why nobody takes you seriously. Because now that you there with Nene one-on-one, now it was Nene, 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 Nene. You know that wasn't what you was about to do. Moving on. Portia was asked to speak at an event um, dealing with, um, excuse me, I forgot the, I forgot the organization. I didn't write it down. But basically, she was speaking out on women, um, women of color and pregnancy and how dangerous it can be. You know, we're still, even with the, the technical advantages um, that we have in, in the medical field, we're seeing it right now that there's still some limitation as to what what can happen and um she opened up and she ended up hosting an event where she invited the ladies and they opened up and they told their stories about their pregnancy and the things that happened with them while they were pregnant and this is a perfect you know marlo spoke on the fact that she's not able to conceive Kenya said that, you know, she almost died in birth. Shamir went into premature labor. Um, um, Portia dealt with some some challenges with, with um, her pregnancy. She's had a miscarriage. And so what people don't understand is that, especially TV makes it look real easy. Mother gets pregnant, nine months later she has a baby. They don't get into all of the, the medical situation and the ins and the outs and all the different, um, the different things that happen with a woman. And how many times women do not conceive, I mean, do not carry a term of pregnancy to term. And that is why when you come across a woman who doesn't have children, you should never assume what their story is. You don't know why they don't have children. You don't know what the reason is. You don't know what their situation is. You don't know if they've ever been pregnant. You don't know what happened to that pregnancy. And as a woman who does not have children, it pisses me off when people want to tell me what I should and should not be doing and how I should and should not be um, handling my life as an adult. You don't know my story. You don't know why I don't have children. You know what I tell you and you know what I've accepted in my life. But what you don't know is why I don't have children. And so any other time you meet, a, especially a married couple and they don't have children, stop asking people when y'all gonna have kids? Are y'all gonna have kids? Do y'all want kids? Stop asking people those questions because you don't know their story. When you meet a person who is grown and they don't have children, you ain't never want kids. You don't have kids. Why you ain't have no kids? Stop asking women those questions. One, it ain't your damn business. But two, you just don't know what the story is. Anyway, I'm off. I'm, I'm done. I'm moving on. I'm back. I'm back. So, um, then we saw Cynthia meet up with, um, Eva and basically she just filled Eva in on what happened at Greece, where we got a chance to see baby Ma baby Maverick and the, um, you know, um, Eva's new home, which if you follow her on social media, you, you see the backyard and stuff. Cause they've been doing different things with the quarantining and posting and stuff like that. Happy for Eva. I've been a, a Eva fan from my top model day. Well, her top model, not my top model day. Her top model day. So I love, love, love Eva. But that's pretty much all that went down in that. Y'all didn't talk about nothing. Um... So it was funny because when Candy was talking to Todd 
and she was like, I think we should go maybe get a counseling session in. And Ty was like, wow, you got some stuff you holding on to that you need to talk to me about. And she was like, no, but I do think, you know, we've had a couple of arguments, you know, um, the last couple of, you know, months. And I just think that maybe we need to talk about some things before it gets to a point, before it does get to, you know, get too far. And I think we need to speak on some things. And baby... How about I think Todd bust Candy's little bubble when he was like, yeah, because I do have some things I need to talk to you about, honey. Candy was like, oh. Because <laughs> how about I think that she thought that she was the only one that had an issue. And Todd was like, mm-mm, I got my list right here. I'm ready. Let's go. So, um, now at the little women luncheon, you know, the pregnant women thing, Nene brings these blog stories about how um, Mark has been cheating on Kenya. And she was like, see, see what I'm saying? See, uh, she's so worried about what's going on with Tanya and the cookie lady. And she need to be worried about what's going on in her own home. And you know what I love about Portia? Portia was like, where you read that? You read that on the blogs or you read that? Like, she was like, it's the blogs. Portia was like, child, if it's the blogs, that don't mean it's true. That don't mean it's true. And... Um, Nene was like, yeah, it doesn't mean it's true, but that doesn't mean it's not either. She said, you know, um, well, we, we never really know the, um, you know, you don't know. And she's like, she said, yeah, you really don't know. And, you know, again, I have to give Portia some kudos that she just really seems to be mature. Now, some people had a little bit of an issue because after her and Nene broke, uh, made up, it seemed like she was team Nene. And I do feel like, but I think that all along she was team Nene. I think she was just hurt. But I still think that she's come a long way. And I, I really I really am liking the Porsche I'm seeing. I really am. I am. Now, I think we got all the preliminary out the way. So let's go on to get back to Miss Candy and Todd. So Candy comes back. She's flying back and forth. Every time she has a break from shooting, she's flying back. And she said, it's, so she we see her and Todd talking. And Candy's like, oh my gosh. She's like, as soon as I got here... Don Juan and filled up my schedule and Todd was like, well, why did you let him? Well, I mean, you know, it was this great opportunity. It seemed like it would be a great opportunity, a great situation. And he was like, okay, but <clears throat> you're not here. And when you're in town, it seems to me like your priority would be to spend time with your family. And, you know, I don't understand why Todd had to break it down the way he had to break it down. And as far as he had to break it down for Candy to get what he was saying. But at the end of the day, Candy, you, Don Juan works for you, not the other way around. When you're coming to town, you let Don Juan know, look, I'm coming to town. I'm going to be in town for 48 hours. Don't put nothing on my calendar. I don't want to go to the studio. I don't want to meet with nobody. I don't even want to come into the factory. I'm going to be at my house with my family, hauled up. For 48 hours and if i choose to come out it's gonna be to go somewhere with my family like y'all y'all need to be getting a nursery together and i know y'all probably just hired somebody and that's fine but y'all need to be getting some things in order y'all need to be getting ready for a baby you need to be making sure that ace doesn't feel like with baby sister baby brother coming along that he going that he's he gonna lose his spot like there are things that you need to be doing with your family that Anything that you got going on that, again, existing pro projects that maybe you have to handle certain things on, fine. But hosting events and that kind of stuff, no. And so then Candy, um, then the conversation evolved into Todd and what Todd is doing. And Todd made it clear. He said, look, I do the things that I've been doing for these last couple of years so that I can sort of prove myself to the world. You know, because everybody wanted to call me a gold digger. Everybody wanted to say I wasn't good enough. So I've been, he said, you think I really want to be a business owner? No, that's never been what I wanted. He was like, when I met you, I was doing movies and I was doing production, but I wasn't making enough money for everybody. And she was like, for who? He said, everybody. She was like, who, my mother? She said, he said, no, not just your mother, everybody. Everybody had an opinion about who I was and what I was trying to do. So in my, in my quest to not look like the person that everybody accused me of being. I've done things and yes, I've made a lot of money and I've been successful at it, but it's not what I want to do. It's not my passion. He said, we just started a trucking company. You think I really want to be an owner of a trucking company? I want to be doing um, projects. And so she said, well, you know, I supported the movie. You know, it's not my fault that you didn't follow through with that project. And it was like, Candy, you're not hearing him. He stopped working on the movie so that he could do these things to 
bring in enough income to justify all the naysayers. And even then, people still question, well, where did he get the money from the stock OLG? Well, where did he get the money from to do this? Well, but people still question him. And so even now, we saw earlier this season where her, her mother is back on that bullshit. So, you know, I feel where Todd was coming from. He said, so, you know, with me doing everything that I'm doing and I feel like I'm do making the sacrifices that I'm making, I don't think it's too much to ask for us to expect that when you home, and she said, well, I feel like you started acting funny because of the, the sex scene. He was like, well, no man wants to see their woman with, a, with you know, being touched and felt on by another woman. Now, mind you, I thought they had threesomes and stuff, so, but, okay. He said, but that's not what this is about. And I'm like, Candy, I, I really felt like I, that kind of irritated me that you reduced what he was saying to his insecurity about you having a sex scene. Um... Because I think what he was saying was bigger than that. That's not to say that he didn't have an issue with it, because he probably did. But I think what he was saying was bigger than that. So, um, it was a deep conversation, and I don't know if Candy totally got it, you know. I, and it was that awkward, she knew he was still upset, and that they were in a raw place. But she kind of had to go, because she was like, I know I heard everything you just said, but I was already... You know, I already said yes. Like, I already committed myself to do this event tonight. And he was like, all right you know do what you gotta do we'll be here and so yeah candy you gotta just stop it's okay you know i get it that you are a go-getter you are a businesswoman and you you want to conquer the world but you know what you can't it's not that you can't have it all you can't have it all right now you gotta pace yourself you have a baby you 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 know pace yourself boo like it's okay like i want you to I want you to keep being the conqueror, but you, you got to pace yourself. It can't, can't happen all at one time. Last but not least, and I just forgot about this. This is just a little snippet. Little Miss Portia got a little jelly gel because when Shamia went into labor, she called Kenya before she called Portia. And so Portia was like, oh, I ain't know they were that close. I find it kind of interesting that Kenya was the person she went to first when she went into labor. Hmm. Mm -hmm. anyway y'all that was that let me know what y'all think drop it in them comments peace